two, one. What is up, guys? This is the Worship Leader Podcast. I'm Terry. And this is Josh. How y'all doing out there in all of the places, all of the lands? It has been a <laughs> while. It's been it's been quite some time. So, Actually, yeah. Uh, I think this will be like through week three or something like that. I think so. That feels about right. Yeah, and so uh, we've just, it's life. Life has been yes. has been uh, catching us, and we've been doing a lot of life things. So, a lot's uh, going on. So what's what's going on with you, Josh? Oh, my gosh. Um, Started a new internship. I'm part-time at my job, so I'm trying to, like, it's it's like one of those figure out my schedule and, like, okay, this day I have this hat on, this day I have this hat on, like, just trying to make sure I juggle that, which I haven't had any, I haven't had any slip-up, thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be really awkward. But, um, yeah, just doing that and just cleaning, organizing, and just all the stuff all of the things so what's the, what's things. the uh internship what, what uh um i'm interning with social work okay. i'm doing i'm like interning in mental health field which is really really the kind of stuff that i really want to do so actually this has been really really interesting that's cool so yes <laughs> been an interesting thing interesting yes ride. very interesting uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on with you, you, you have you been like in the uh, clinical setting yet or actually yes started? i'm oh, interning at like a okay. clinical well i say clinical it's like mental health hospital setting oh, yeah, that's and definitely so the clinical yeah setting. literally <laughs> never a dull day <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely the clinical setting yeah uh and i've been um i've been kind of uh well it's been as far as uh work and stuff i've been i've been having a little more time off lately and so i've been i've been doing some uh I've been doing a lot of music stuff, so that that's fun and that's exciting. Quick little commercial. Yes. I uh, I do have a single free. Yes. That will be coming out on the twenty eighth of this month. So this will air Tuesday. So it'll be um, next week. It'll be next Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be in six days from 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 when you guys see this. And so also, he has a YouTube channel, if you don't already know, and then um, Instagram. He does have an Instagram, and he actually posts a lot of singing videos on there. They're really good. You should check it out. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, it's, I've, I've been I've been uh, up to a lot of music, a lot of music. I've been I've been enjoying it, so it, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, <clears throat> And outside of that, oh, Viv is, she will be going to real school coming up. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> she's been in, in uh, kind of pre-K, and mm -hmm. she goes right up the street, and it's a it's a really structured pre-K, and it's, it's, it's gotten a, getting a really she's good. She's going to public. Really. She's going to school school. She's going to school school. She like, was a newborn, and now she's going to school school. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we, we got her into a uh, Montessori program, oh. which is... We went and toured the school, and we really liked it because um, I, it was my first. I've heard of Montessori, and mm -hmm. people tell you, oh, it's interactive. But when you see it, you you, you get it, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so I got a chance to see it. Uh, I wonder how long Montessori schools have been. Uh, like, when I was in, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Well, I think Peabody, well, if I remember correctly, Peabody is a, mil is yeah, a Montessori. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, I'm assuming it's been around for a while because, to my knowledge, Peabody hasn't, like, stopped being the kind of school that it is. Yeah. As far as I know. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> at the knowledge base that I'm at right now, they have not changed what type of school they are. So, I'm assuming it's been it's around for a while. Been around it's just nobody long. talks about it. So. Yeah, yeah, nobody talks about it. And so, um, and so we got a chance to, to go in and to tour the school, and we – uh. We got in the class and we saw how they they have no desks in the classroom oh, and it's okay. like a bunch Didn't of know stations. That. Okay. And when you count, there's like toys and okay. Y'all hear Louie, He's he's oh, yeah. throwing a drama fit yeah. in the other room right now. Real life us, happening so. right now. <laughs> Real life. This is life, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so if they're they're counting, they'll have a bin with ten toy apples in it, and they have a little chart in front of them. Okay. Um, Two plus two or whatever, and they'll get the apples out, and they can oh, actually put their hands I on. Yeah, I like that. And and work and, and kind of hands on experience. Yes, yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed the model. I think it's going to be really good for her. So I'm excited about it. Uh, also, Trisha still working on her. She's <laughs> you know she's uh, she's excited, but but uh, that's 
that's our babies, but that's our babies, you know. Yeah. And, and for for <laughs> Trisha, not for Trisha, for Viv to be going away from from us for eight hours a day, however long school is. How oh long, yeah. Oh yeah, and eight this eight is gonna be like day. every day basically. Yeah, and it's gonna be every day, so it's. I'm. I, I guess I'm warmed up to it. Uh, we're warm. We're warmed up to it. But it took. It took Trisha a little longer to warm up to it, but. Now it's it's all good, yeah. It's all it's all good, and Gigi's far off from that. But that's some stuff you're gonna have to start. Yeah. <laughs> in, in years to come, you know. <laughs> Bus lines and carpooling. <laughs> Carp- and oh yeah, I forgot about that. We're gonna have to wake up early. God help us all. <laughs> I guess we'll alternate taking her to school or whatever. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that because I've heard, I'm already like I already hear like the horror stories of just like everybody and their mom is literally there. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> and so for the uh, worship leader portion of this, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about, I was looking at this article, um, and it's by, um, it's by uh, Carrie, sorry for butchering your last name, Carrie, <laughs> N-I-E-U-W-H-O-F. Mm. <laughs> Naiwa. Oh, mm. <laughs> no what the, I'm sorry. N i e u w h o f. So that it's a oh, it's goodness. a website there, and um, and the topic is seven things uh, lead pastors wish they could say to worship leaders. So they kind of they kind of because you know lead pastors and worship leaders. Or pastoral staffs or lead pastors. Like, we come from a church where things are, we have a lead pastor, but it's also like a team. And Mm -hmm. I I feel like everything is kind of, everything is kind of, there's no, everything is shared. All of of the knowledge is shared. All Mm -hmm. of the, all of the things are, the load of of carrying a church, which we don't know, but we could only imagine uh, being a pastor. The load would be great. So, um either the team or the lead pastor, seven things that they would want to. And I guess we'll just jump right in. It says, uh, the first thing, I guess, that lead pastors would want worship leaders to know is what you do is really important to the life of our church. So let's just say that what, what we do as worship leaders, like bringing in, well, we don't bring in the presence of God, but we help to, yeah. we help to get people focused and in one mind and in one accord and point, get everyone directed into giving God praises. And, and he, he lives in, he lives in our praises. He inhabits them. And that is, I feel like that is very important to the life, to the life of the church. It's, it's that in the, I mean, church is that in the word, but God's going to do whatever he's going to do. But I feel like he, he, he chooses to use order in the way that he lets worship prepare our hearts and prepare our minds. He could just, he could just upload it into a download it into us, you know, whatever, but he, he Mm -hmm. chooses to let us get our mind focused on him and, and get him one mind and one spirit with him. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's the way he speaks to us. So I I feel like it's very important. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's for me, it's one of those things where it's like, from people from the standpoint of like people who are already in church it's just like okay yeah like the worship leader is they're the wake-up call they're the leader they're the hey this is the direction that we're going right now and sometimes it's just the they're the example of what mature worship should be looking like or what you know you know however you want to phrase that but then like on the new people side that's not so church like you're also well, honestly, not not necessarily also, but much more so that because like they're coming into church and people there are people that genuinely don't know what to do yeah. once they get to church. <laughs> right. And so it's just like they're looking to you because you're on the stage. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. and so they're just like, so what are we doing through during this song? And some people is literally just like they just they just need that instruction. I think we actually talked about this on on like a previous episode. Yeah. I forgot how okay. long ago. Yeah. But yeah, but it's like. They're looking to you for the cues. So it's just like, yeah, as a worship leader, I know sometimes it feels like this whole like you it's easy to get into this rut of just like we're coming in doing these three or four songs and week in, week out and whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But it's just like what you're doing 
it's helping to create a culture of worship that facilitates this presence of God that people feel week after week after week. Cause it's like, it's not like people just walk in and just like fall over or anything like that. I mean, we wish it was that we really <laughs> wish it happened like that every week. You have no idea. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, but it's just like, you know, it's, there's, there's that part where you, there's that part where it's just like you come in, you praise and you worship and you bring in the, the presence of God. And also I think that just comes with having a resident, presence of god where it's just like knowing how to respond yeah. whenever god comes in or knowing how to respond whenever god does something for you not just for the church service but in a daily thing because it's not just a whole oh we only do this at church like this should be like a daily thing and i'm gonna stop because that's actually a good topic that i'm gonna document uh, um. yeah, that is, <laughs> and i'm gonna hit on this real quick uh, when you were talking, it made me think of this, and I'm I'm gonna try to stay. We got seven of these things to do, so I'm gonna try to stay on track. But uh, like one of the things I was thinking is, and we may be able to talk about this in the same thing, but I'll just mention it. Like the weight. Uh, I don't think people talk about it. If you're not a worship leader, you mm -hmm. probably it's something you've never you probably haven't experienced. But as worship leaders, we can feel the weight of a yep. congregation if that congregation is struggling with pushing through mm -hmm. we feel that weight and it pulls it pull, that's why you and you just have to praise through it like yeah. it, it pulls on you and you can you can feel the the weight of of whatever it is mm -hmm. you know kind of kind of pull no on, that's true on your worship <laughs> so and you just got to worship through it uh, so the second one is your long and i really like this one uh, your long-term value is in producing other worship leaders yeah so yeah that's that's <laughs> that i mean really and truly if you think about it it's just like yeah i mean like you're not gonna like up and leave your church like next week or anything like that hopefully um <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like 70 years from now i mean you you you're gonna have to think about the fact of just like someone else is gonna have to come yeah. take the reins exactly you know? <laughs> and one of the things you mentioned which is we saw this years ago like when the pandemic hit if you were in a church that that was not you know actively producing worship leaders and had them on all stages and all levels then what did you do when when two people got sick or or mm. or two people got quarantined that also was true it. so i i think it's very important to um uh, to be to be producing other worship leaders like it the the one if if all you have is one and it's a smaller church, mm -hmm. then that's understood. But if it, if your church is relatively sizable, I get I guess you can't be relative with that. Cause, mm. but if it's if you have a few people that are interested and that are capable, uh, then there should be a few people leading worship and maybe one in training you know yeah and honestly i think that that's something that's applicable for like every church size because i mean like yes it's easier on larger churches it's easier when you have a larger church but sometimes what happens the bigger church you have you can get into this routine of just like this is what this group of people does yeah. uh -huh. but then what do you do when that group of people isn't really there right, and right. that can even honestly that even happens in a medium-sized church and but i mean like a lot of times you feel it more the smaller you get just simply because it's just like if they have to miss for something like that like they're going on vacation or they get sick or there's a family emergency or something like that then it's just like oh snap we have no music like right, exactly <laughs> but on a larger scale it's just kind of like and i'm going to take it a step further not just creating not just developing worship leaders who can get the job done but in the sense of creating strong worship yeah, leaders because right. there's there's doing it and then well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that but doing being able to do it confidently and right. do it strongly yeah. because it's just like okay awesome you have a worship team but do you have do you have people that can lead that team do you have people that can lead a song confidently yeah. week after week do you have people that can lead multiple songs <laughs> week after week because right. it's just like it's right. one thing to be able to lead one song but what do you do when it's when you have to lead more than one song? You have to lead two songs back to back. Can you sustain that? 
because that is surprisingly hard to do, believe it or yeah. not. Yeah, and then, <laughs> that is not an easy thing. <laughs> and then when you have to leave two songs back to back and there's technical difficulties and you have to fill, that. You have to fill the space. That. Right? Can That's you ad lib? Can you talk to the congregation that <laughs> right. you're standing in front of? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's very important like it like the 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 like our value as worship leaders is to any and this is a thing where I don't think you even have to be like dubbed the person that mm -hmm. does this. Just find someone who is not where you are that you have some experiences you can share with them. Mm -hmm. You have some things that 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 you that you've gone through in worship leading that they haven't yet, and let them in on it. Let them, <clears throat> excuse me, let them in on it. Let them know you know the uh, uh, share with them and and you know do it over lunch and. The next thing you know, there there's a mentorship, you know, yeah, and, and, and that's someone true. is growing, you know, and it's it's very important for us to keep it alive, to keep the culture alive, mm -hmm. and to invest in in people that are not necessarily younger, but I, I mean younger in in the scope of doing worship leading. Someone yeah. can be older, but younger in, in yeah. worship leading. So. I think it's very important that we that we do that and we invest and, in others. And honestly, I think that is extremely tied to understanding that the ministry, not your ministry, but the ministry is bigger than you. Yes. And keeping that in That's mind good. and not getting stuck in this this merry-go-round of just like it has to hinge on me and it has to fall on me and I have to do this and I've always got to be the person like if I, I understand, like, if it's like that for a little while, because, I mean, things happen, circumstances, stuff like that, but your end goal for the ministry should be taking it from me to we. Yes. And if it's if you're exactly. not doing that, you have destined it to fail. Yeah. Regardless of what size church you're in. Yeah. That's just what's going to happen, because the thing is, the very culture that you've cultivated is going to die with you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's just, exactly. that's, the, that's, the, is, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is. And I was listening to a podcast and there was back in the, um, in the days, um, uh, like of segregation and all that, mm -hmm. there was, there was the major league baseball and then there was the Negro league, which mm -hmm. were African American baseball players. And that happened to the Negro League. That's what happened. Like, the, the guy that started it, mm -hmm. nobody else knew how to run it. Nobody knew, else knew how to do anything mm -hmm. with it. And when he passed, that league passed with him. Like, it, it, it was out with him. And there's a story in yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a story that. So, you know. that's just, I don't know. I was just thought about that story while you were, while you were saying that. But, yeah, if if there's not a culture of, of learning and 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 – inclusiveness for not for mm -hmm. the sake of inclusion but inclusion for the sake of growing yes uh, that part if it's because it's so easy to get into that rut of just like teaching people how to get into the routine yeah but it's just like um and this is something that i really like that um our youth pastor has has said a lot how are we getting them from point a to point b yeah i mean like no you're not trying to turn them into i mean like they don't necessarily it's, you're, you're not trying to build like a team of charity mark crowder and you know whatever yeah, you right. know but it's just i mean if they come out like that praise god yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. you are doing amazing right now y'all are in an amazing spot um but i mean like it's it's just getting them to that point of just like are you develop are you getting them to the next step of being a better worship leader and um, and this is going to be a hard one. Are you okay with them being better than you? <laughs> yeah. yeah are you are you training them with the expectation that they are going to be better than that you? Good. That's good. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> like, because really yeah. I'm I'm going to be honest. There are people there are people that are younger than me that I sing on teams with right now that I am a hundred percent positive. By the time they get to be my age, they are going to blow me out of the yeah. water, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, yeah. and the, and the thing is, there's. The body who got me thinking. We're gonna be on this subject for a while. Yeah. The body, the body has all different, you know, all mm -hmm. kinds of different parts, and you know, and you said this yourself. One of the parts that that you have a passion and a natural passion mm -hmm. for is the mentorship, is the mm -hmm. teaching, is the that and that and that's a that's. I would argue that that's a more valuable part of the body than the actual singer, because because the singer. Like you said, once 
now I'm not diminishing, you know, yeah. I'm not diminishing anything, mm-hmm. but, but it's very valuable to have someone who can replicate, mm-hmm. who can, you know, who can do that. It, no, that's true. Cause I mean, honestly, and I'm glad you said it. Cause it's like what we're, what we're doing is about impact. Yeah. We're trying to impact people. We are trying to, we're trying to impact and we're trying to influence and we're trying to, trying to move this thing forward. If, if all you're doing is getting up and singing for the sake of singing, you're, you're doing something, but it's not doing anything effective right. for the purpose of why you're up there. Right. And so it's like, you're, if the whole purpose is to be inspiring this to be happening in somebody else. This yes. is supposed to be stirring up sure. this, this worship, worship culture in the people. It's not right. about, Oh, I got up there and I did this run or I did this thing and right. it's just like, woo, I did it. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> congratulations, claps for you. Put out an album. That's for you. <laughs> but it's exactly. like, it's exactly. this is this is. I mean, like what we're getting up there to do and what we are sacrificing our time week after week, staying away from, not staying away, but like sacrificing time with our families, sacrificing our energy, even though I mean, like we work a nine to five or. A, 12 hour shift or something like that and then we come to practice we're not doing that just for the heck of it like right, right. we are doing this because we are trying to create a cultural worship in the people that go to our church right that's why exactly. you're a worship leader like no. <laughs> yes, that's really that's a really good stuff yeah uh, and so here we'll move on to the next one no i haven't heard the latest bethel call. <laughs> this <laughs> so so I think sometimes there is, I think sometimes there can be a disconnect. You have some pastors that are musical and they, they, mm-hmm. you know, they get it. They, they, some sing of them were former write. worship, were oh. not, not former worship leaders, but they just yeah. kind of transitioned into yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, pastoral <laughs> ship. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, you have, you have that type of pastor, but you have the type of pastor that they're a word pastor. They, you know, they listen, <laughs> they listen to their, three songs mm-hmm. during their worship or from whatever. the 1970s and they have not stopped <laughs> right. and, and 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 music to them is a vehicle on it's not an artistic expression it's a vehicle for the presence of god to mm-hmm. move and that only you know and, and and i think i think sometimes you know we we have to i guess not blur that line and we have to embrace if if we're I've never, I've never, uh, personally, I've never been under a pastor that was mm-hmm. like that, or, or I've never experienced a pastor like that, but I have heard stories. And, uh, I think, I think that if, if we are dealing with a pastor that, you know, that they're not the artistic person that they don't have anything against the arts. They don't have anything yeah. against singing. They it's just, just like, that's just, not how, they just not how they operate. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes we need to, I think sometimes we need to, if we're in the situation where, where we're where we, with a pastor like that, we need to kind of give some ground in, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, we love to have our artistic expression and we don't want to compromise our artistic expression because I feel like God uses the arts mm-hmm. to connect with people because people yeah. love the arts. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And he uses I mean, the like beauty. It, it's there for a reason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he uses the beauty to draw and connect people and draw them in. Uh, but I think sometimes, you know, if if there, I guess if there's odds at mm-hmm. that, I don't know if there, well, I guess there no, could I guess, be odds. I know, I think that's a good way to put it, though. Because um, it doesn't always necessarily have to be, like, a full-on, like, conflict, as to, but maybe, like, not even, like, a we just don't necessarily see eye-to-eye right. kind of thing. Right, We've never had, like, a, you know, you're not fighting in the church parking lot about it, but <laughs> 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 hopefully. Um. <laughs> but you, you'll have a pastor that's like, hey. Give me something on holiness. Well, there's not yeah. a lot of stuff on holiness. Also true. Something. Bring that back. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. his, his sermon's going to be. Uh, you know, and, and some pastors, I guess, give discretion to the worship leaders. I, I mm-hmm. would think most pastors give discretion to the worship leader. And, and, and you know, I guess we – if – if that's not their world, we shouldn't push it on them. We should, mm-hmm. just, you know, have our things mm-hmm. and, and and have our suggestions and stuff. And I, I don't know. What, what well, honestly, I think it's also just the fact of like understanding 
what your role is. And I feel like it just keeps coming back to that, like understanding what your role in is in this situation. This isn't this isn't a concert. This isn't your album drop. This is not <laughs> this is this is I mean, like, yeah, you can have stuff in your living room, but this this is church right. like this yeah. is you got to understand the purpose of what we're doing here yeah. and i mean like yes you're gonna hear songs that it's just like man this is really good and i would love to do this at our church and then like you bring it up and they're just like nah i'm not feeling it like <laughs> <laughs> you have to be okay with hearing yeah. like no yeah. and like being okay with understanding that like, there's a bigger picture here like right. this is the church this is the ministry not your ministry and understanding understanding how all of this fits together and i mean like okay if you want if if you really really like this song and you're just like really feeling it, it's just like i really want to do something with this like do do let me do i mean i'm not saying don't do anything with it but just don't don't get hurt and bitter and charge and start church drama because the pastor said that he didn't like this particular song or he doesn't want to use songs from this particular artist yeah. because at the end of the day he is the shepherd he's, exactly. he is the shepherd of that church right. and there's probably there may be a spiritual reason why he doesn't like that may, yeah. and he may not be able to communicate that in the sense of just like oh is this concrete reason sometimes it's just I listened to it and I didn't like the way it made me feel spiritually right. and so <laughs> where I'm not going to bring that to my church right. like because exactly. I'm not going to expose that to our it, I'm not about to expose that to the flock because I don't know how that's going to play out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. like we not, we're so we're not even finna open that book. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's just understanding that it's just like that. If it's it's touching you, and that's great. And I'm I'm guess I'm speaking I'm speaking that from a place of experience because it's just like there are some songs that I really 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 like, and I play it during my during my personal time, and I play and that it does something special for me. But I personally would not play that at church because I know that is a shipwreck waiting to happen. <laughs> I, I know if we do that at our church, it it, it will just not go good. It's not going to translate well. Yeah, <laughs> like it just exactly. it just won't. Yeah. And so it's just understanding that, understanding, understanding how how all of this is supposed to fit for me anyway personally. Yeah, I think that's really that's a really good point. Really great point. And I have nothing to add to it. But that's a really good point. <laughs> And so, uh, number four, your, <clears throat> excuse me, your internal spiritual life impacts your ministry deeply. Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> this is a spiritual ministry. Literally. So, and we can, we can get so far. And I heard somebody say this and I, I think, I think there's, this is not original to me, but it's good. Like, you know, sometimes just because we're singing, I'll say we, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll include myself. Yeah. Sometimes just just because we're singing, uh, and, and we're not we're not in the right we're not in the right place. You know, God is God, and He'll if someone needs a touch, and God is God, He's gonna give them that touch. But yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that our that we are right spiritually because God mm. is doing what God does. That. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that. you know God. Yeah. God will God will use our gifts because they're they're without repentance and and we offer them to mm -hmm. him and and he you know he'll use it but but also Jesus said this you know this mm -hmm. kind come out only by prayer and fasting so yeah. there's some things that you know there there's yeah. some walls if your spiritual life is not there there's no, some that's walls true. that are not going to break there's some things that just won't happen because this kind doesn't come by that this mm -hmm. kind comes by personal you know, personal sacrifice, personal. And honestly, I feel like it makes a huge difference because it's just like there are people that and I feel like there there are people that we specifically look up to. Not necessarily because of their singing ability, which I mean, like, yes, they have amazing singing ability and they have this this amazing knowledge on worship leading and how to run a service and all this other stuff. But the very basis in the root of that comes from their relationship with God. Yes. That's that's what fuels all of that. That's what gives them the wisdom to know what to do. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's just like you you're supposed to be partnering with the speaker and you're supposed to be partnering with your pastoral team and you you it, it 
if you are on leadership at your church, there needs to be a spiritual component to what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. I'm sorry, yes. this is this right. is not a gig. Right. You're not coming up there to collect a paycheck. Right. And if you are, you need to sit down and figure it out. <laughs> like, this is this is and it, it's like there it's. And when I say like this is church, I'm not saying that in the sense of just for the sake of church culture. I'm saying that for the sake of people's lives. This is the body. Yes. Yeah. Like there there are people's lives hanging in the balance right. of this. And yeah. like you have to understand that people are coming coming into a church service or they're com- or they're hearing these songs on YouTube and they are coming at this from an angle of just like they are having really, really rough marriages or they're having really rough mental battles or they're having a rough day at work or they are dealing with self-esteem i mean like literally the list goes on and on and on and on and on and the bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke and if you are not if you are not doing what you need to do spiritually and you're not and you are not taking out the time for private devotion where you're praying and you're studying and you're taking out that time with God and you're just getting up there and trying to do it on your own, then at that point you're trying to break the yoke with your own ability right, instead exactly. of God's anointing. Exactly. And that's going to be a very principal issue yeah. somewhere down the line. Right. Like, and so like it's, and I'm going to be honest, like I've, I've seen it where it's just like, there is a noticeable difference where it's just like, good singing and then anointed singing and anointed singing comes from that relationship and that walking with God and things that you've experienced. And it's just like, yes, talent and all this talent practice, all that other stuff. Yes, that is great. And we need to be doing that so that we're, you know, not, not a hot, hot mess whenever we come up on someone's platform or whatever, but like the very, if the, if the basis of that, is not coming out of your relationship with God, then you have a principal issue because yeah. at the end of the day, like this, this isn't like you just coming up and doing whatever. Like this is, this is a spiritual ministry. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, I, uh, this is some, I heard Jonathan McReynolds say, and it's, mm-hmm. it's along the lines. I think it partners really well with what you just said. Uh, and it's really good. Uh, he said, God gives us gifts and talents but our gifts and talents are not for us. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he was like, your, you know, your gifts and talents. And he, I guess he's, he's speaking from a different place because he's a, you know, he's an artist and all yeah. that. He was like, you know, my gifts and talents, they keep me up at night. And my gifts and talents do this. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's not always the best for, for him. And, but it's not for him. It's for the body. It's yeah. For, um, whatever God is doing through him, it's for him to take it and give it to the body. Mm-hmm. Through him, he means songs and, and all of that. Yeah. For us as our worship leader and, the, and mm-hmm. the abilities and the talents that God has given us, they are not for us, but they are for the body. And, mm-hmm. and part of, I think part of understanding that, or one of the things that helps us to understand that and keep that in check is the spiritual life. Yeah. Is the spiritual yes, sure. life. Uh, like it's, it's kind of hard to. It, it's kind of hard to stay out of balance. It, we're human, and anybody can get out of balance and get in their own head or whatever. But it's hard to stay there, if if you're doing the things like you said, yeah. you're, you're doing the devotion, you're taking time in prayer. It's hard to stay in that rut, you know, very long when when you're when you're checking in with God every day. And he's like, <laughs> knocking your head. What head you doing? Head. <laughs> this is not for you. This is for the body. So. Yeah. And honestly, like even taking it a step further in the sense of just like people can tell when you're faking. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are not doing what you need to do, like personally, then it's going to affect what you do publicly, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. Where it's just like you're up there and you're trying to lead people in worship and you're talking about how good God is, but you just cut somebody out yesterday. Like <laughs> <laughs> there's this disconnect. And like if in in it's one of those things where it's just like people 
whether we like it or not, people do take into account what we do all, every other day oh, of yes. the week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and if they are see that you are meaner than a junkyard dog and then you try to get up on a platform and lead somebody into worship, they're not going to respond to that because yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't even trust you. Yeah, this, like. this, brings like a whole no- this opens a whole nother can of worms. This is like this statement, but from a whole different perspective. Like, like <laughs> I was thinking on stage, but off the stage, if, if your spiritual life is not in check, we're not talking about anointing and breaking the yokes and stuff in the moment. Let's just talk about everyday life. Like, <laughs> like if you're not, if you're not a nice person, if you're, yeah. mean, you're, you're doing all this stuff that are opposite of the fruit of the spirit, the fruit or like bitter. Fruit yeah. Stuff, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like they're gonna, they're gonna like, wait, that's not supposed to be yeah. like that. You know? And it's just like, yes, I mean, we are human and we're gonna make mistakes and stuff right. like that. But this is this is more so about like lifestyle. Like this isn't like. Oh, you're having a bad day or you yeah. encountered like a bad moment and you just like lost your temper or something like that. No. And like this, that, that kind of stuff happens and you bounce back, you get back up again. You know, you're just like, you know what, I'm going to do better next time, that sort of thing. But this is more so like this, this whole lifestyle of just like, well, I'm just going to do it like this and I'm justified. And, and you, you know, that's, you have to check your, not necessarily yeah. check yourself, but you have to be open to God checking you yeah. <laughs> and understanding right. that like, and I'm, and I'm even speaking this to myself and just being open to God saying like, Hey, fix your heart. Hey, fix your attitude, fix your character, fix this. Like, you know, letting God do what he needs to do to you to be a Christian, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. essentially. Right, right. Yeah. Cause it's just like, how are you talking about? I'm a worship leader and I'm on the leadership team at my church, but like, then your lifestyle is like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, right. Yeah. And it's like, like I said, it's internally and in, it's internal, your internal spiritual life and it, it impacts your ministry very, very, very deeply. Um, and another one on to the next one. Engaging the people, I like this one, and I like all of them. <laughs> Engaging the people in the back row is the highest priority. Mm, I, yeah, and I think people in the back row, like there's people sit in the back row for different reasons, but all of those reasons, you know, are a testament to why they're a higher priority. Like me and my wife, we sit on the back row because we have children. <laughs> And children are children, but <laughs> it's true. But the thing is, well, usually I'm I'm up worshiping, I'm singing and and doing worship leading. Mm-hmm. And my wife has two children, so she's easy access to the door and all of that stuff. Yep. <laughs> but for someone like that, it's the highest priority because because your mind and and your focus may be on the ch- may be on the children and maybe yeah. on this and on that and and. You know that life can be a stressful life, so you need you know you need to be ministered to. Mm-hmm. And the people that sit on the back row because of shyness and insecurity, or I don't know if anybody at this church likes me, mm-hmm. then they need to they need to be engaged. Yeah, because because they're that's someone that can slip away if they're not engaged. Then you got people that are that are just on the back row because. They're they're not right with yeah. God, and they just they just want to kind of slip. Yeah, no, that's true. For different ways, they need to be engaged. Like, yeah, I, I think I think this is a very true statement. How about you? Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm trying to see how to phrase it correctly. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it's really 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 easy to minister to people on the front rows and even on the middle rows. Yes. Because it's just like, I mean, if you're sitting that close, you might as well be engaged because people are seeing you. Yeah. So you're going to engage because it's like this. It's it it, it just is what it is because it's like people can see you. But the people on the back row, like you said, like they need something, too. I mean, they didn't just show up to church just because I mean, like I know. Yeah, people say that. But there's a reason why they keep right. coming to church. Exactly. There's a even if they're sitting on the back road, there's a reason why they keep showing up. Yeah, like, right. exactly. and you have to see that still as an opportunity to reach them and, and minister the love of God to them. Because the thing is like, yeah, they're sitting on the back row, but they need, they need that song just as much as the person on the front row, right. whether exactly. they're willing to admit it or not. They do. Yeah. And some people get a touch from God on the back row. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with the, with the back row at all. Yeah, I I um I've got many 
many a touch <laughs> on the back row with my children with the with the tablet and and, mm-hmm. and Cheetos or whatever they whatever. <laughs> Who they knows, knows what else? You know? <laughs> yeah, and so uh, it's yeah, it's definitely and there's something you said I wanted to tag on, but I can't I can't really remember it right now. I, I don't know. I can't remember it right now. Uh, you were saying. Oh yeah, you were saying it's easier, you know, to to minister to the people on the front row, and it got me to thinking about what we t- what I said earlier about you know you can you can feel that that weight, mm-hmm. and you know sometimes in the in the back that's I guess I'll preface this because it might sound like I'm saying if you sit on the back row then all's lost. That's not, <laughs> what, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm saying. I just. Let's just say a back row mentality, because uh-huh. you have people that sit on the back row that don't have a back row mentality. They, also they true. come to worship <laughs> on the back row, and that's uh-huh. needed. So I'll just say a a back row mentality, like the um, people with the back row mentality that 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 you're pushing through, and that that extra worship you're giving, that extra praise, the extra prayer that you're giving for God to move can be for those people, can be mm-hmm. to engage those people, you know. Because also it's just like you don't. You don't really know unless God tells you or unless they they talk about it themselves. You don't really know what people are going through. And sometimes they're sitting on that, uh, like you said, like because they feel like they don't belong at that church or, you know, like maybe they're a newcomer and they're trying to feel it out because they're trying to figure out like, okay, what kind of church is this like? (laughs) 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 What am I what am I walking into? (laughs) And it's just like if you're just, you know, if all you're doing is ministering to the front row or all you. If all your impact is just going, if if your impact just extends to the middle row at best, the middle section, I'm sorry, at best, like whether you realize it or not, you're just kind of leaving the back row to the wolves and good luck. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I guess before we before we move on to this next one, before we move on to this next one, um, what you said is kind of like, you know, uh, not it's kind of like you're not getting the job done. Like, it, you, you're, yeah, you're not getting the job done. And sometimes when I want to get the job done, I use pure Gianna. <laughs> pure Gianna gets the, <laughs> pure Gianna gets the job done. <laughs> if you need moisture on your skin, he gets if me you need every <laughs> time, and I should expect it, but I don't. <laughs> I, <laughs> so yeah. This episode is sponsored by Pure Gianna. Uh, it's a line of products that are uh, that are all natural. It's skincare products. Uh, yes, made yes, by yes, 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 made yes. by. Is it mostly Waikisha? Basically, mostly, yes, mostly <laughs> basically. <Waikisha>. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yours truly. Right here. Uh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's good stuff. Like I um uh, I still I still use that body butter uh, faithfully. I'm still using it, and so uh, yeah, go check it out. All natural, great stuff for the skin. They're on Facebook uh, at Pure yes. Gianna. Is it Pure Gianna? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, Pure Gianna at Facebook, and that is uh, G I A N N A. Yes, two Pure, ends. Yeah. Yes, Pure Gianna. So go check them out. This episode was sponsored by Pure Gianna. <laughs> uh, so we'll move on to the next one. Can you finish your expense report on time this month? So I guess this doesn't really apply to volunteers. Uh, yeah. And we're volunteers, so we don't have a lot to say about yeah, it. Yeah, not really like, sure. Um, <laughs> But I guess this could, this could go into, like, the whole time management yeah, thing as far right. as it's, like, if maybe not necessarily expense report, but in the sense of just, like, um, if there's, like, a deadline for something that needs to get done, how are you work? like, how well do you work in the deadlines that are needed for the church as a whole. Yeah. In the sense of just, because I mean, like, I mean, you're, you are a part of the church and you're a part of the, you know, the mechanism. So it's just kind of like after a certain point, they're just kind of like, we kind of need you to have this stuff together, whether it be like, I mean, like if you're the graphics person or they just need to know like, okay, what's so- what kind of songs are we singing to see like if this is actually pairing up with what I'm feeling in my spirit to speak to the congregation so we can say like yay or nay or, you know, like, oh, well, we really need more upbeat songs than down songs or, you know, something like that. Like how, I, how, how well are you working in the system? I guess is a good <laughs> way to put it. And I'll say this. I made it through, but I used to be like, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good at it. I think 
I think. I'm getting pretty good at it, but I used to be the worst at confirming. Like, for... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of getting stuff done on time, like, I used to be the worst at confirming for, hey, can you um, lead blah, blah, blah this Sunday, or can you be in this microphone this Sunday? And I was the worst. Um, I was I was really, really the worst at it. But now I, 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 I reply, I think, in a fairly reasonable time frame like there's nothing i don't i don't think i leave anything hinging on me you know uh it, it's i try to get back as soon as possible and um I, but i used to be the worst at it and that's something we need to be aware of is uh yes like you were saying that's i mean that's just doubling the same thing you were saying no um, but i mean like i think that's a good point yeah. like <laughs> yeah like it, it's it's i used to be the worst and I, I mean i'm not the best now but i'm not I, I I think I, I don't think I'm a hint I'm a I don't think I'm a hindrance you know so yeah I get I get the information on time you know so that's something we could probably all improve on well some people don't need improve on it but I know I can and number seven the last one I'd really love to talk when you when you can chat uh, when we can chat so pastors and worship leaders you know you you there's and we talked about it a little early, but there's mm-hmm. there's the, I guess the stereotype that worship leaders are the artsy kinds and mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> way and off pastors, on that field somewhere. Woo! <laughs> 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 and pastors are the are the you know are the suits and ties and they're they're you know whatever. Uh, you got your work uh, your, your hipster <laughs> worship leader coming with the backpack and beanie. You're like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but I think it's I think it's really important for uh, for the worship leaders. And and the leadership to to have to have communion of some kind because mm-hmm. it, you'll get to the point to where I, even if you're not the best of you don't have to be the best of friends or doing whatever but I think it's important just to kind of know what mm-hmm. because a, a pastor may it's it's good to to know each other enough to where you can lock in during during a service. Yeah, you can kind of anticipate what, you know, what what they may be wanting, what they may, be, and that mm-hmm. that can come with chats. You know, mm-hmm. you can talk to a person that can be like, well, I really like these types of songs. I really like these types of songs when I yeah. preach, and you can have that in the back of your mind. And honestly, it even helps because it's just like I mean, it's it helps with the flow of the service. And yeah. when I say that, I mean. If you have a pastor or someone on the team, on the ministry team, that, I mean, like, when they're feeling it, they're going. Or, like, you know, they or you may have someone that's just, like, they're much more, like, they stick more, they like to stick more so to the schedule because they prefer to just kind of have things flow a certain way or something yeah. like that. It helps because, like, it takes the guesswork out of right, it. Right, exactly. Because then, like you can get the team ready for more so of just like, okay, we're going to plan for this, but this may also happen. You can have contingent. Well, I say contingent. It's not a hurricane, but like (laughs) you can have, that's a good word. You can have contingency plans for when something happens. Cause I mean, like if you have the kind of pastor that's just like, you know what? Nope. That's the one I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm, I'm I'm kidding. And this, you only have this. That's only the second song, but like you have five songs planned, for example, if you don't know that, then you're caught out of left field because, like, you know, like you're, let's say, like, you're having a moment and it's just like, yeah, your eyes are closed and you're about to start something. And then here comes the speaker. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. And you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, sometimes you can hide it. A lot of times you can. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just be honest. You can't fake it till you make it sometimes. That's right. And like, it just kind of, it, it helps the cohesion of the service. It helps the cohesion of the team. Understanding that the pastoral team and the pastor and the ministry team is a part of the worship team, and yes. you are part of the pastoral team. Right. Let's just face it. That's just what it is. You go. You may run under different names, right. but you're together, right. <laughs> hip exactly. to hip, whether exactly. you like it or not. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you're all in this boat together. You <laughs> sink or swim together. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's good. That's really good. That's really good. You got anything else? Um, and also it's song preferences. I mean, congratulations. You may like CCM or country or whatever floats your boat. But if you're 
because it, I mean, like if if their mindset is like somewhere completely different. Yes, you we need to be praying and being sensitive to what God is saying as far as like worship and stuff like that. But I think there's some merit in taking into account who's on the team, because at the end of the day, again, like you're you're working together and you're not trying to have your worship be on this end. Like, for for example, I'm I'm the kind of worship leader that genuinely like that generally tends towards like the slower worship, you know, that sort of song. (laughs) But if I'm if I'm paired up with somebody who's like, yeah, charge, (laughs) run the aisles and stuff like that, which seems to keep be happening (laughs) uh, (laughs) like I'm not going to sit here and just like week after week after week after week after week. Well, let me rephrase that. I don't need to be week after week after week doing in ending it what like the slow song and the low song and the th- Yeah. I love you, Lord. <laughs> because now they gotta figure out they now they gotta come out of their comfort zone and figure yeah. out how to bring the com the congregation up from their knees and up to, you know, <laughs> declaring and faith building and stuff like that. Like I, I like it's there's certain topics you just can't preach on <laughs> From certain point, it, it's let me rephrase that. There's certain topics that are very difficult to preach on from certain points. Like if you're trying to preach high and you've got them way down low, you've just added like 15 minutes to their sermon. Away. Yes, he's got, he's got like you know, give them a break, please. <laughs> like eyes closed, you feel you feel somebody staring at you. Yeah, <laughs> and it's the preacher, and they're just like, you've sunk me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm sorry. Like it's, it's one of those things that you gotta. Yes, you gotta know your audience, but also you gotta know your speaker, and yeah. you gotta understand. Yeah. You gotta understand what kind of person that you're dealing with, and just, and I mean, like it's, 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 it can be complicated if you are rigid. Right. Yes. I'm gonna put it like right. that. If, if you're rigid, it can if be you are rigid, That's you good. you're gonna have to understand that it's it's not all about what you want to do. Right. And I'm and I'm trying to say that as un unstingy as possible. <laughs> 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 like you just it's it's um honestly I'm trying to find a way to say it without repeating myself. But I mean like yeah, just under un yes know your audience, but also yeah understand your speaker also right because it's just like yeah there's sometimes when ending low works because they're talking about things like consecration and you know getting to know god and just like conviction and stuff like that but then there are other times when they're just like they're trying to have they're trying to preach faith and we're going to have a healing service or a miracle service or you know we want people to get the holy ghost we want people to get baptized we you know that sort of thing and sometimes that's the it is harder to get them to that point when you're laid out and sometimes i right, will get up get up yeah or it can be the reverse order where you're the kind of worship leader that's just like you know something happens when i call your name or you know breakthrough or breakout or you know something <laughs> like that and you're just like woo and the preacher's just like yeah well here we go don't know how we're gonna gonna calm them down now um because <laughs> it's supposed to be bible study and you got got them hanging from the ceiling here we go <laughs> All right, I need y'all to come down about 10. Yeah. 10 levels. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, so you got to, I mean, that's that's where the whole communicating, yeah. communication comes yeah, I think in. You sit down, have a lunch, and you mm-hmm. can hash that stuff out over some your favorite meal. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. Yeah. Um, just really just understanding the cohesion of everything and understanding that it is a team effort. It's a yeah. team effort. Emphasis exactly. on team. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's right. I think that that wraps up the seven. Um, and you know, our time we're we're getting. Oh yeah. <laughs> our time. We try to we try to keep these things, you know, in a in a time that'll that'll keep your attention, and you're not like, like ooh squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, so we enjoyed this. This was, I really like doing this, going over these. Uh, yeah, that was. I, I enjoyed that was it. It was, it was it was helpful. It was fun. Uh, so y'all go make sure y'all um, go check out all of the things and Facebook, of, Instagram, know, yeah. all, uh, we're on everything but Twitter. Literally. On everything, <laughs> and you know these are these are really these are really good uh, these are really good topics. If you got any more of these, uh, any more of these, just put it in the comments. We'll talk about it. Uh, we're here to we're here to serve the congregation. I was yes. going to say congregation. Congregation. The, 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 the 
congregation out there in the world. So if y'all have anything yes. y'all want to hear, uh, just let us know. We'll, or if you have we'll any questions, care. or you you're you got some situation and you're just like, you know, what would be some help for helpful perspectives on X Y Z? You know, yeah, I don't know. Right, exactly. I mean, like that. Send that. Yeah, we want to hear that. <laughs> and the thing is, if we don't have it, somebody may be in the comments that's like, they may have a legit. Yeah. You know solution or, or advice you know to to the things that's going on so mm -hmm. yeah go check us out uh and if you if you um what was i gonna say i don't know can't remember um i was just gonna, probably about to repeat what i was what, what we were just saying yeah um i don't know so we'll just get out of here <laughs> i can't remember <laughs> see you guys in a couple of weeks peace peace